Traditionally on elections day, we give away our decision-making power to someone else, to political parties, to political leaders. Then, when electoral promises are broken, we complain, we protest. And we will continue to suffer the demise of public education unless, this time, before you give away your decision-making power, you demand from your candidate a commitment to develop and implement a system of direct democracy similar to now polling.ca. Most religious people send their children to public schools because this is an opportunity to meet with the whole diversity of people. You know, we, we all live together in communities with that we have different religious perspectives and so on. So um, there's no need for most people to separate their children from others. Um, yeah. Well, right now, um, the, you know, the private schools that provide the full program get 50% uh, uh, of the funding for the, that would go to public schools in their own areas. But um, uh, so one way of looking at this is that it saves money because they're, you know, picking up half the cost. But the, the, so it's not really a good deal for families. Why pay, why pay um, tuition fees when you can get the whole program covered by uh, tax dollars? But the, the longer term concern is that uh, if many people are enrolling their children in private schools, then we may end up with a two class system and people would be less willing to invest in public schooling uh, once they start, you know, spending their money for their, for their own kids. The principle of public schooling is that what we desire for our own children, we would desire for all children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so there is some small disadvantage there, uh, undermining the public good through a little bit of a private club on the side. Well, it, yeah, I wouldn't say that, that that's a problem right now, but, um, you know, if, um, if we've had an underfunding problem for public schools and when, when everyone believes that we have to do this together to make sure that all children get adequate funding and support, then we will invest in the public system and make sure we do that. Um, well-funded public education is a way to equalize opportunities for everyone. So we do believe in a well-funded, well-governed, high-quality public education system. Um, sometimes parents are frustrated. They might have special needs for their children. They don't feel they're being met in the public system. What we want to do is to encourage people to advocate for adequate resources for the public system um, so that, you know, and when people feel that they can get what their children need in the public system, they don't feel the need to enroll children in private schooling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. So they, by staying within the public system, they would help bring that service to the public system rather than splinting and uh, splintering and, and to a small group and said we exactly yeah yeah exactly uh, see that also across the the pond in England uh, where you've had a long tradition of elite private education with uh, uh, Eton and Harrow Oxford and Cambridge where uh, the aristocracy and, and subsequent those who are extremely well to do and the upper middle class in England um, make huge sacrifices to get their kids into private schools um, both uh, primary and secondary private schools and subsequently as the, the, the education that they get there is seen as a ticket to getting into an elite university like Oxford or Cambridge. And that too is, a, a, in my view, um, inappropriate and it is a, a, a vehicle through which an elite maintains its control over the broad society through the educational system that it uh, controls. Uh, again, we, I don't think in Canada, luckily, have not fully gone down that path, but with growing inequality in the country, that is a possibility that we now face.
Uh, do you think that is that would help here? Uh, I don't. I, I think um, tuition is an important part of growing up. I mean, one thing I like about the post-secondary system is you move from your school where you're a child. And it's kind of that first step into adulthood and you're, you're learning responsibilities, you're learning about being a citizen. Part of being a citizen is paying your taxes. Part of that is tuition. In, in BC, we subsidize about 75% of the average student's tuition. 25% seems to me a pretty good personal investment to make in an education. Um, I, I think that's probably a fair amount for them to pay. Uh, they're obviously going to get personal value out of their education. They're going to get better jobs, better careers in the future. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's a fair balance. If uh, students pay a little bit, absolutely get into debt. They complain yeah. because they say, "Well, I have a hundred thousand dollars in debt before I became a doctor." Mm -hmm. Do you think that's fair? A doctor bills out several hundred thousand dollars a year after. So you know, <laughs> if I said to you, uh, "You need to go a hundred thousand dollars in debt today, but you're going to have uh, the opportunity to make a quarter million dollars a year the rest of your life," you'd probably take that deal, right? So it all depends how much money you can make. Yeah, well, it does. And, and you know, I, the funny thing is, you know, not to relate to personal experience, but we're dealing with this right now. My wife and I, we've both gone back to school uh, part-time, her, her to finish her degree, me to start my master's. Um, and, you know, we've had to make the tough choices. Okay, you know, this is going to be a little bit of debt, a little bit of, you know, cannibalizing some of our savings. But we think that for the next 20 years, it'll give us more opportunities Um And you got to bet on, you know, it, it's kind of like betting on yourself a little bit. I, I, I believe in myself. I believe in my wife. I'm going to bet on myself by paying some tuition. Now, you mentioned that uh, paying taxes is a form of being responsible. Mm -hmm. So if uh, everybody paid enough taxes and we could give uh, universities degrees for free, uh, those educated professionals would pay a lot more taxes too. So uh, why is it... Uh, Why do we believe that they are not responsible enough? They, they are also paying taxes if they're working part-time uh, during uh, studies. Yeah, well, when things are free, you don't treat them with the same respect as when you have a personal investment in them. Um, you know, this is a pretty basic law of economics. Um, you know, if things are free, it, it, the funny thing is the same people who argue for free tuition also argue for carbon taxes because, you know, polluting the air, in their words, shouldn't be free. There should be a cost attached to that. It always amazes me that they don't use those same, you know, they don't see the fallacy of those two conflicting opinions. You need to have that personal stake in your own tuition, in your own education, because, you know, the state, if you gave free tuition to everyone, the state would have to employ literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands more people in order to handle the load. Um, very expensive, huge cost to taxpayers. Um, and, you know, if you're not paying anything, you don't, may not take it as seriously as someone who's got a, something on the line. You, you don't enjoy it as much. I'm, I'm thinking of a park. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't pay to go into a park. And uh, it's free. But mm -hmm. could you say that it's less enjoyable because it's free? Uh, I mean, a park is a park. Um, we do pay for other recreational facilities. I mean, you pay to go to the pool, you pay the ice rink, you pay for all sorts of things. You know, as a society, we've kind of said, look, green space is a value. Um, you know, most communities have some sort of ratio of, you know, how much park space per um, citizen that is necessary. It, it's become kind of this ingrained from the very beginning, a corporate value of ours as a society. Um, that said, we do pay for parks. I mean, part of your property taxes goes to upkeep parks. I mean, I can tell you as an old city councillor in Langley, the most shocking expense I ever saw was how much it costs in landscape maintenance on parks, medians, and boulevards in Langley. I mean, millions and millions of dollars we spent on mowers and, and gardeners and, and grass clippings. And just, it blew my mind that that was that big of an expense. And that came out of taxpayers' pockets. Is it run? No, I mean, you know, you have that discussion as a community. Every community has to set their own sort of, you know, standard. And, you know, for some communities, um, they have more green space than others. Some have more natural green spaces rather than kind of the manicured uh, fields. It just depends on, you know, taxpayers and, and what they're willing to do. The, the biggest problem, though, is that you have this overall tax burden. You know, all these different levels of government that don't talk to each other. And that's where it starts to get expensive. When 42, 43% of your income is going to pay taxes for various things, you know, I do think there's a top end to, to what people can pay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any studies that would say that uh, people rather not pay taxes for higher education for universities and rather let the students uh, get in debt? 
Uh, I haven't seen any polls on that. I mean, it's, it's kind of motherhood and apple pie stuff, right? Like it's hard to actually get good definitive public opinion surveys on that. Like if I asked the public in general, you know, should we pay for kids' education? Yeah, absolutely. If I said, do you want your taxes to go up $275 a year in order to pay for kids' education? No, absolutely not. You know, the, you have to actually, in order to get the proper public cost station, you have to give both sides of the argument, make sure they know exactly what they're going to pay, which we never do as in government. I mean, government never gives us the actual price tag of something that they want to roll out. That's a good possibility. However, we don't have any statistics, any poll that says that you're right or wrong. Speak to you from you know, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation point of view, we have you know, 80,000 supporters across Canada. We poll them every year on, on issues that are important to them. Um, and I can tell you that you know, free tuition never comes up as an issue of something they want us to tackle. Yeah, well, these uh, members of the taxpayers are usually people that don't want to pay taxes. So they yeah. would not support uh, paying for free education, obviously. Well, I mean, I think they, they're people who want smaller government, who want um, government to quit wasting money. The, the thing we hear over and over again is, look, why are they asking me for more money? when they're wasting it on jobs ads, when they're wasting it on, um, you know, <laughs> ethnic, uh, ethnic memos, you know, ethnic voting strategies. Why are they asking me for more money when they're wasting so much? And, and the truth is, you know, they're right. Government does, government is not the most efficient operation. And until they are, they really should be trying to live within their means. Mm -hmm. Now, post-secondary education, uh, they have this fees and the students are accumulating a lot of debt. And they say, well, that's a good incentive for people because they learn responsibility. And it's a good investment because uh, it doesn't matter if you uh, rack up $50,000 debt because you're going to make more than 50000 a year anyway. So it's a good investment. Well, I, th I think that if you ask most post-secondary graduates whether or not their degree was a good investment and whether it it they were immediately able to start paying off their loans, you'll hear a drastically different story. Mm -hmm. um, some people are, are, are very lucky and they go out there and they get the jobs that they're looking for and they're qualified for. Many other people go out there and they're either unemployed or they're underemployed. Mm -hmm. And so creating loan programs just creates a, a legacy of debt. Now there's a cost to administering that loan program and I'd, I'd like to explore whether the loan program and the grant program have um, you know, similar costs because when we give a grant to somebody who's in financial need, mm -hmm. um, they are able to go, they get their education and they go out there and they become you know, they, they're able to establish a life. They're mm -hmm. able to establish a family and a career and start contributing to society. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an investment that we have to make in, in the future of our, our children mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Some people think that uh, education should be a human right and therefore money shouldn't be involved in it. What do you think? I agree that education is a human right, but I'd like to caveat that post-secondary institution, the way that we have structured it, it is not going to scale so that the entire population is going to have, be able to have the same university experience with, um, you know, small classrooms, intimate, you know, conversations with knowledgeable professors. We're already seeing class sizes increase in universities and colleges. Um, those institutions that are bursting at the seams with people who want a university degree because it's what we've all been told we should work towards. Mm -hmm. So education is a basic human right, but is the institution of a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, is that actually the model for the future? That's what I would want to have a conversation about. Mm -hmm. uh, are you implying that it might not be necessary to have a post-secondary education? I think that we have this idea in our minds that everyone will get a, a, a bachelor's degree, a piece of paper for your wall, and that's your ticket for life. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to question that because I believe everyone needs to be lifelong learners, but it doesn't necessarily have to happen mm -hmm. in a university, in a college classroom. There's a lot of learning that can happen outside the world and mm -hmm. that should be open up for all people. Mm -hmm. And just in general, philosophically speaking, do you think that uh, uh, university students should have to pay, even if it's just a little bit, like right now it's about 20% of their 
actual cost. Yeah. Do you think they should pay maybe less or the same or more in, uh, in education? I think people should have to contribute towards their own education. Mm -hmm. it, as you said, it is an ongoing investment in your life. Mm -hmm. um, it shows that you're taking responsibility for yourself. But I don't think that you should be saddled with a lifetime of debt just to get a piece of paper that society is telling you you have to have to get ahead, especially when that piece of paper is not a guarantee of a good job or a good career. But a little debt would be okay, you mean? And I'm not talking about debt. I'm talking about, um, you know, when I was 14, I started working part-time so I could pay for my tuition. Mm -hmm. My parents told me I had to pay my own tuition. Okay. That was the deal. So students should be responsible enough to pay for their own, whatever student fee is, without having to go into uh, a student loan. I think students should have to do uh, the absolute best that they can. Mm -hmm. um, some students are able to get jobs and some are not. I think student loans, um, I'd rather see grants available. I'd like to see a rural living allowance for people who come from areas outside of the towns where there, there are colleges mm -hmm. to help students access education. Um, I don't want to say let's fund post-secondary institution 100% so there's no cost for the student mm -hmm. because we all have to participate in making our own future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm specifically the students that benefit from it should uh, pay a little bit yeah. to, to show their, their interest in it. It's not just they're interested in it, it's that they're investing in themselves. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect a handout to, to create opportunities for you. You have to go out there and say, this is the future I want for myself. This is what it's going to cost me to get some training here. Um, and you know, go out and, and do some work. If, that's, if, it's, if it's more expensive than you can come up with, mm -hmm. then we need to have the conversation about grants mm -hmm. or loans and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I know it's just about 20% of the total cost, but still it, uh, it amounts to maybe $100,000 if you become a doctor. Would, is it's that the very need for expensive. It? Yes, it's very expensive. And you know, after World War II, we started all across Canada and most of the Western world uh, was encouraging uh, students to participate in post-secondary education. That's good for the, for the student, good for their family, and uh, it's good for the economy. But what's happened is the proportion of the cost being borne by families uh, is now much higher. So, uh, and, and, you know, large debt loads, as you mentioned, are picked up. So the fees have, have risen a lot. Well, the, the issue is that there's tuition fees should be, um, you know, reasonable. Having thousands and thousands of dollars of debt when you graduate from, you know, an ins uh, a higher education institution, a college or a university, is, is a great burden on the family. Our view is that um, the public should invest in higher education, and then we recoup the costs through the taxes that people pay. So rather than, you know, because you're not quite sure when you go into some particular field of science or whatever, whether you're going to become you know, very wealthy as a result of your investment, that education or not, you, you don't control the, the labor market. So when we, invest, when we invest publicly, then the benefit flows to the public and to the individual and individuals that make higher incomes will pay their proportionate, uh, you know, level of income tax. And that would be the basis for funding the participation of others. Mm -hmm. What uh, what do you say to uh, people that think that uh, paying a little bit is a good incentive for them to appreciate what they have? That if you if everything is free, then people do not appreciate it. Well, I'm I'm not I don't have a problem with that, uh, but I'm not talking about free. Uh, you know, I think your point is that when you make a, a financial contribution, it's a way to uh, it, you know indicate that you're serious about your in, uh, your time in public education in higher education but uh, when you come up with thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of debt it becomes a serious impediment to uh, to getting those higher qualifications 
uh, is it uh, you don't think it's necessary in our society to uh, to uh, have that uh, that fee that not uh, large debt loads no mm, a little debt loads maybe how much do you think it should be well when i you know when i went to university it was around four hundred dollars a year now that's a while back but uh, so when you get twenty five thousand a year or ten thousand a year that's uh, when you pick up a, a debt load of four years of, uh, you know, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, that that's that's punitive. It's not an encouragement to to go for higher education. Mm. So you don't object uh, student fees. You just uh, object the amount of student fees, how how high they are. Yes. So it, it has gone too high. It's gone too high. But the student fees are okay. I think a modest amount is fine. It, mm -hmm. You know, it's a it's a sign of seriousness, sure. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's traditionally what we've had. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now, some places it's extremely low, and some are free. But mm -hmm. uh, is there any shortage of uh, of uh, staff of uh, academic teachers uh, for schools in general, or you think we have a surplus of uh, professors and uh, school teachers? There are uh, underemployed teachers, there are unemployed teachers. So in terms of the number of positions there are now, um, there are many people who are not getting, you know, jobs or not getting enough time. So that's another major difficulty um, in the specific case of uh, education. You, if you take, um, you know, you go to college and get your uh, teacher education certificate, but you may be several years um, with no employment or perhaps on a teacher on call list and uh, you're only getting a, a very small payment. So, uh, yeah, no, there is a problem there. And part of the problem is uh, perhaps that we've uh, turned out more, too many teachers, but a bigger part of the problem is that we, uh, the class sizes are, are, are too large. Uh, because uh, the class size is being large, it uh, makes me think there's a shortage of teachers. But you're That's saying right. it's not it's not shortage of teachers; it's rather short of fund shortage of funding from the government to hire more. That's put it this way: there would be more teachers employed uh, if there, there was a um, uh, lower teacher to student teacher ratio. Uh, there's been, you know, cutbacks in library services, special education services, and so on. So if we met all those needs and we go back to the issue of a, a well-funded public education system, the thing is to be able to meet the needs of the students. And when we find that we don't have enough money, one of the reasons we don't have enough money is we've cut uh, corporate income taxes and we've cut um, personal income taxes. So uh, I put it this way, for most families to have somewhat higher uh, income taxes and to have somewhat higher taxes and to have a well-funded public education system is better than their children not being able to go to higher education or to have substandard uh, schools in the K-12 through system or to pile up huge uh, debts to pay for the tuition. And by the way, even in, you know, kindergarten to grade 12, uh, there are major costs falling on families because of the tuition fees that are charged for special programs, it's fees for all sorts of programs because the uh, funding for the basic programs is not adequate. So the fee per service introduction is based on not having enough funding from the government. Exactly. Now, there's been court cases over this. Uh, uh, public schools are not to be charging fees, but they do uh, in order to provide services that they would say, you know, that maybe the students don't have to get them, but to go to a science camp or an outdoor school. There's fees for all of these things, to play on school teams, fees. So many things that were covered as part of the basic program are not now. Uh, some people think here that uh, 
uh, is a business investment for students because they invest on them on themselves. Some others see it as a human right; it should be free. What, what's your opinion on that? Well, you know, I think in some countries, uh, Denmark comes to mind. The free education at the post-secondary level is a standard practice, uh, something that the country believes in strongly. I, I think that we have moved in the wrong direction in terms of student fees. Uh, that uh, certainly in BC, student fees have more than doubled in the last 10 years, and I think that's wrong. Um, one of the things that happened during the 1990s in BC is that for eight years there was a tuition freeze, and I think that was a good policy. Um, it does mean you have to raise more tax money, and this I think is the nub of the problem that uh, a lot of people do not want to pay sufficiently in the tax system to ensure that we have enough money to fund our universities properly, but if we're going to do that we actually do have to pay. That means that people have got to basically step up to the plate and recognize that to have a decent post-secondary education there is a cost to it and we need to pay for it. And the fairest way and the right way to pay for it is through our tax system. Um, the um, underfunding of universities is well documented uh, and the, the problem with uh, higher fees of course is that uh, what that does is make a university much less affordable for uh, students from uh, working class or ordinary backgrounds and it also leaves students with a huge debt at the end of the process. Many students are graduating with thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars worth of debt and in some professional schools even higher um, and I think this too is very inappropriate for young people. When I graduated many years ago uh, I graduated with absolutely minimal uh, student debt and I had to, the, the province of Ontario where I studied and paid uh, for virtually all my education and the tuition was extremely low. Uh, now we see uh, about, uh, 35, 40 years later a total um, change in which students are paying a much higher share of their education where they end up uh, being significantly indebted as a result of uh, their uh, the cost of education uh, and this is a barrier to access uh, and uh, arguably very unfair to that generation as well. Um, people like me should be paying more tax to support the education system. Uh, that's the, as um, um, Oliver Wendell Holmes once said rightly that uh, taxes are the price we pay to live in a civilized society. And in the longer term I would certainly prefer to have a situation much more like say Denmark where post-secondary education at all levels is free. If we really want our agenda to rule, we the people must initiate and legislate our own rules of governance. That means we need to change our political system. And during elections, we have the best chance to demand from candidates our citizens' right to decide on our own legislation through initiative, referendum and recall. You can also participate on this political experiment by adding your initiative on nowpolling.ca so it can be counted.